every time you open that tab and you tell yourself just this once, your brain releases the same chemical flood that's triggered by powerful stimulants. And the more often you do it, the more your brain learns. This is how we survive. Masturbation isn't evil, but when it becomes compulsive, it reprograms your brain like a drug. I'm going to show you what your brain is actually doing beneath the surface and why it's completely reversible. So let's talk chemistry. Dopamine is the chemical fuel for craving, curiosity, and the chase. When you stimulate yourself, your brain experiences a dopamine flood, a spike, anywhere from 150 to 250% above baseline. That's about the same burst that's seen with stimulants like cocaine or amphetamines. That surge feels powerful. But here's the catch. Your brain is actually mechanized for balance. It's constantly trying to keep your internal chemistry within a healthy range, like a thermostat. So after every single spike, it's going to push back with an equal and opposite drop. And if you keep forcing those dopamine surges faster than your body can recover, your baseline keeps falling. Over time, you'll need more stimulation just to feel less alive. That's why what once gave you a rush barely registers anymore. The system designed for balance has been miswired for pursuit. Here's where it turns into reprogramming. Every repetition strengthens the same loop. Trigger, craving, reward, crash. The loop becomes the most traveled pathway in your brain. So let's imagine it like this. Let's imagine your mind as a mountain with endless trails. The first time you use self-stimulation to escape discomfort, it's like cutting a small path through the trees. The next time you walk it again, the brush clears even more. The ground flattens. Keep going, and that shortcut turns into a worn, obvious trail that eventually your brain takes automatically. Meanwhile, the other trails, the ones that lead you to focus, motivation, connection, well, they start to grow over with weeds. They're still there, but they're harder to find because you've stopped walking them. The nucleus accumbens, your craving center, it loves this new trail. Every time you walk it, it drops little dopamine breadcrumbs to encourage you to come back. Good job, it says. Come this way again. That's neuroplasticity in action. Your brain reshaping itself around the repetition of that behavior. But just like hiking, the trail you take most becomes the one that lasts. And when that trail leads to instant relief, self-relief, instead of real regulation, well, it starts eroding the mountain underneath you. This is why calm can feel so uncomfortable. When you stop walking that familiar trail, the one your craving center knows by heart, the woods go quiet. There's no rush of noise. There's no quick reward waiting for you around the bend. There's just stillness. And that silence can feel wrong at first. So your brain starts looking around, wondering, where's the stimulation? Where's the hits that I'm used to? Anxiety rises. Focus wobbles. You will feel lost. But that's not a moral problem. It's neurochemistry in recovery. Your nervous system has spent so long racing down the same path that it's forgotten what it's like to simply stand still. Calm is not emptiness. It's a new trail your brain hasn't walked in a while. But the more you return to it, the clearer it becomes. Okay, so let me know. 
Have you ever felt restless or uneasy after you've tried to stop? Hit me with a yes in the comments. That's not failure. That's your brain finding its way back to peace. The same way walking that old trail built the loop of craving, walking a new one builds regulation. Neuroplasticity doesn't care which path you take. It just follows the repetition that you give it. You can teach your brain to take a different route, one that leads you back toward focus, toward motivation, back toward real connection, but it takes consistency, not shame. Start small. When that urge hits, take a different step. Replace stimulation with movement or just pause and breathe. Each time you do, you're clearing a little more of the brush from a new trail. Create friction. Delay the impulse by two minutes. That's two minutes of craving and of carving out control over it. Practice stillness every day, even for a few moments. Stillness is like setting camp along a new path. You're giving your prefrontal cortex time to stay online and build strength again. This is exactly what I teach inside my Explicit Matter Recovery Program. It's a neuroscience-based roadmap to help you calm the craving circuits, rebuild your baseline, and rediscover genuine connection. Because Healing isn't about suppression. It's about recalibration. You're not fighting your brain. You're guiding it home one step at a time. So yes, masturbation can reprogram your brain like a drug, but that also means that your brain can reprogram itself back. It was never broken. It's built to adapt. So every time you move toward calm instead of chaos, your brain leans into its natural quest for balance. That, my friend, is the beauty of neuroplasticity. Your mind isn't fighting against you. It's waiting for new instructions. When you retrain your brain toward balance, you don't lose pleasure. You restore presence. You reconnect with the version of yourself that doesn't need a hit to feel alive. Join me inside the Explicit Matter Recovery Program, the masterclass that I teach step-by-step -step with science, structure, and compassion. I can lead you because the goal was never less desire. It's always been about regulated desire. The cure isn't less pleasure, it's more presence. I want you to remember that and always remember to control your brain or it will control you. I'll see you next time.